Welcome, welcome to this Steel video where we focus on battery technology. Today's episode is all about rechargeable batteries and the switch from petrol to battery powered tools. Why do we need to talk about rechargeable batteries? Well, first and foremost, because we want to give you some insights and guidance into how you can best use your steel equipment. And also, of course, to address any questions and comments regarding battery powered tools you might have. You expect the highest standards from steel. And you know what? We listen to you. So in this episode, without further ado, we're going to take a look at some of the quality features that make steel products what they are and why they remain the same even when switching to battery power. My name is Matt. I will be your host for today. You might know me from Timber Sports, but today we're swapping the arena for the workshop. And to support me with all of the technical details today, I'm delighted to be joined by Paul from Product Management. Paul, you're very welcome. It's great to be working together today, mate. Thank you very much, Matt. I'm really looking forward to talking to everyone about battery power tools and how they can make our work lives much easier. Indeed. So let's do just that. Why don't we start off by getting uh, a view from you of the kind of things that you and your colleague hear when you speak to professionals. What are they telling you about the products and particularly this changeover? Well, absolutely. I spend a lot of time talking to professionals, whether it's small businesses or large businesses. And we generally hear that they're really enjoying moving to battery power tools because they're, they're quiet, they're low vibration, there's no emissions at the operator level. So it makes their work lives really easy. You can just pick up the tool and it works. You don't have to start the engine or anything and you can just get on with the task at hand. So it's a, a really, really good thing to hear great feedback from the operators. But they do have some reservations as well if they haven't made the switch over to battery tools already. Sometimes they can question whether the tools will have enough power to get the job done or enough longevity in the battery to get the job done. So hopefully that's something we'll talk about today. So when you hear the word steel, you think of quality, right? Certainly when it comes to the combustion tools. Are we allowed to make the same reference uh, with regards to the battery power tools? Exactly, yes. We've got the same quality standards that go into all our battery tools. So we've got great workmanship, great materials, and even from the, the cells which we put in the batteries, deliver a really premium product that's great for the operator to use. And you produce all of your own batteries, right? We do, we make our own and make and design our own batteries, which go in our extensive range of tools. So the batteries can deliver the right amount of power to the tools, depending on the application. Right. And they're also built to be really robust, lightweight, and have a very long service life as well. So. Uh, We'll go into a video now from one of our colleagues in the research and development team who's going to tell us a little bit more about all the technologies that we've put into our batteries. Okay, here we go. My name is Daniel Zarteig. I am part of the product development team here at Stiel, responsible for our batteries and chargers. At Stiel, we are driving the transformation to battery-powered tools. The name Stiel stands for the highest quality and durability of our products. Of course, we also apply this to our batteries. It all starts with the cell. The cell is the centerpiece of our batteries. And we pay special attention to high quality materials and components. We ensure they comply and fulfill the high requirements we have internally through extensive testing. For example, by using our drum test. In doing so, we ensure that the battery can fulfill its service life requirements, even under harsh professional operating conditions. When several hundred batteries have successfully passed all the tests at the end of our product development process, we release the product and make it available for sale to the customer. Very interesting. Okay, that was Daniel Sauerteig from, as you said, from your research and development department. A uh, lot of technology in there. We'll, deep, we'll dive deeper into that uh, later. What I particularly like, though, was that drum test there, mm -hmm. sort of testing the, the durability. Seeing as it's lying there, am I allowed to do my own little test? Yeah, why not? Here's a battery. Yeah, okay, all right. So we're going to do our own little way. test. Safety first. Let's clear the space here. Here we go. Uh, test number two. <laughs> And here we can see there we go. the battery is still a Test fast. I like it very much. Beautiful. All right. So they're sturdy. We've established that. They've got a bit of technology in there. We're going to de uh, dive deeper into that later. Uh, but you do some other tests on the batteries as well, right? Yes, we do. We've got uh, two tests we can show you now. Um, one using it in really cold freezing conditions mm -hmm. and also with a, a water resistance test as well. Okay, so, so talk the, us through what they're doing here. So the first test, we're taking the chainsaw and the battery out of... Um, sub-zero temperatures. 
just measuring the temperature there. And it goes straight and, to work. Yeah, it's working absolutely fine. It's fully operational, using full power as you'd expect from yeah. a machine of this quality. Very impressive. And the second clip here, we have the IPX4 water resistance test, and that's water splashing from all directions. Right. So all our users are used to working in difficult conditions, whether it be cold, windy, rainy. So the operators have to work in those conditions. The tools have to operate in those conditions. Absolutely as well. right. So, uh, they're all working as expected. Very nice. So we've already touched on that experience that Steel has and the quality standards that they've always shown. Can you appreciate though that there might be a certain amount of skepticism whether they can transfer those standards over to the battery technology? Oh, absolutely. We've, we've got nearly 100 years of experience building combustion engine powered machines. Right. And they're really well regarded for being robust, powerful. And we want to take that over to the battery sector. Yeah. So we want our machines to be at the forefront, regarded as really reliable, powerful and up to the job. We've learned a lot in the last 15 years of developing battery powered tools. Mm. So we want the same standards to apply that we've and the same thoughts to be given to our battery powered machines that, they, that have been given to our, our petrol powered machines. But we've actually learned a lot in the in the former times with cutting attachments, right. gearboxes, and um, how the machines work. So it's not all about the power head, it's about the combination of the power head and the cutting attachments. It's about so meshing those technologies, right? Exactly, everything we've learned from engineering over the years is going into our, our battery powered machines these days. Fascinating stuff, but uh, one of the questions people often associate with batteries is, is it gonna give me the power? Is it gonna give me the capacity? Is it gonna have longevity? Yeah, absolutely. We get asked that uh, quite a few times as well, as you can expect. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we have different types of batteries, as we've already heard, with cylindrical cells and the AP300S. Those batteries can actually last up to 1,200 charges before seeing any significant um, loss of capacity in the cells. But the AP500S, with the flat laminate technology, yes. in, they can last up to 2,400 charges. What does so, that mean? So in a normal working year, you work around 250 days in that year. Yeah. So if you charge that battery every day, whether it's at lunchtime or night, that battery would last around 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, that's a, a long time. For that's us. not bad at all, is it? All right. Not at all. All right. Uh, but the other issue with batteries, some people say, is not only how long they last, but as you're using them, the, the power seems to drop off. I think of my... Uh, electric toothbrush in the morning for example right you start uh, brushing your teeth and it, it sounds very powerful and it's going and then a couple of seconds later it's and then it's do we have the same kind of drop off problems with steel batteries not with steel batteries but that is something that does happen with um with batteries as the voltage drops they yeah. do lose power but steel batteries don't lose power with a combustion engine tool the battery or the the power is exactly the same from the first drop of petrol to the last drop of petrol. Exactly. So it should be the same for a battery tool as well. And that's the smart technology that works that out, is it? Exactly. So without going into a too deep science lesson, power is voltage, in our case 36 volts, multiplied by current in amps. Right. So our technology actually monitors the voltage. As the tool is used and the voltage drops, it increases the amps, which means it delivers constant power. So whatever task you're doing, you've got constant power with your tool all the way from the start of the charge right through to the end. Very cool. And you conducted a test to try and help us see that live, right? Exactly. So we've got a really nice test with one of our leaf blowers here. It's set up on a rig, rig blowing a metal plate, which lifts some weight. So what we can see on the still tool here is it's got constant power. It's holding the weight suspended in the air all the way through use. And after about expect. 10 seconds, the other uh, device dropped off in power, right? Exactly. The other, the other machine isn't able to hold the weight, so it's experiencing a lot of power. And that's not the experience you really want with a, with a power tool. You want to have the full power all the way through its use. Fascinating. So we've seen for ourselves that they're robust and durable. Um, we've heard about the battery capacity, the battery longevity, the power, uh, but you also mentioned a little bit about the intelligence. That would interest me. Tell me a bit more about the smart functions here. 
Oh yeah, we've got a very smart battery management system, which you can just see underneath the clear cover of this AP500S battery. Right. So not only does that make sure you get constant power from the tool, but it's got a bi-directional communication between the battery and the tool. What does that mean? So it means they can talk to each other, but let's get a couple of tools out on the uh, table first. And okay. I'll through it. Okay. I'm going leaf blower. So I've got the MSA 300 chainsaw here. So that bi-directional communication between the tool and the battery means that when I put the battery in the tool, the tool can tell the battery how much power it needs. So our most powerful battery powered chainsaw, the MSA 300 here, needs three kilowatts of electrical input from the battery, whereas this smaller BGA 86 blower needs less power. Right. So it tells the battery to deliver less power. And adjusts accordingly. Exactly, and it goes between whatever tool we've got in the range, the tool always communicates to the battery telling it how much power it actually needs. Very interesting, but you were telling me that it also can give extra power when it senses it needs it, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you're, say you've got a blunt saw chain, really putting the tool through its paces. Yeah. In the batteries, if you need an extra bit of power, the tool can tell the battery to deliver a little extra power for a short period of time. So if you're going through a, a knot in a, in, a, in a piece of wood, it can deliver a little bit of extra power to help you get the job done. Very nice. And you also brought a video with you um, where we see robots taking batteries in and out of charging stations. What's going on here? Exactly. So what we're seeing here is us testing the bi-directional communication between the tool and the battery by putting it in and out of the, uh, the brush cutter there thousands of times. Right. So, not only that, it's testing the communication, it's also testing running the full charge cycle of the battery. So it's being charged, discharged, and then charged again thousands of times, just making sure the electronics are working over, over multiple uses. Got it, very nice. You hear people complaining about uh, robots taking our jobs, right? <laughs> there are certainly some jobs that we want robots doing, something like that. Exactly that, yeah. Okay, let's put these beauties back. So we've got a bit more space on the table. Um, so when I'm thinking about all of the technology that's packed into these things, I wonder whether we should be concerned about safety. Are they going to overheat or anything like that? No, we've, we've got the smart electronics in the tool that actually makes sure that it protects the tool and the battery. So at an early stage, if you're sawing through some wood with a really dull chain or you're using a blunt cutting attachment on a hedge trimmer, it would detect that the battery is warming up or the tool's motor is overheating as well, and bring it down to a safe level by reducing the current um, coming from the battery. So you can, these early protection mechanisms actually make sure you don't damage your tool, as you don't want that happening. But it makes sure it brings down that power in the tool so you can keep doing the job rather than the tool just completely overheating and turning off. So it's a, a protection mechanism that allows you to carry on with the job at hand and get ultimately get it done. Exactly, I like it, safety first. Okay, so when we're talking about batteries, we have to talk about charging as well, right? Absolutely. So I will get you a battery charger and maybe you can tell us all about this universe. Absolutely, so when moving to battery powered tools, you need to think about the jobs you do and how long you're doing those jobs for to help you choose the right amount of batteries for your fleet. Makes sense. <laughs> to get you through the working day. Yeah. Um, and then think about your opportunities to charge. Right. So can you charge either on the work site during the day, where you need to charge fast on a lunch break perhaps, or back at the depot while you have your lunch, having your batteries on charge before going back to the work site. Right. Um, or can you charge overnight? So you could charge a little bit slower overnight. Because you have more time. Yeah, exactly. And the battery knows whether it's being charged fast or slow, right? Yeah, so these, these batteries can actually charge faster up to the first 80% and then a little bit slower for the last 20% just to preserve battery health. So there's some smart electronics again that uh, preserve the life of the battery overall. Very nice. And if I've got multiple batteries? Yeah, well, we've got different options. We've got fast chargers and faster chargers for single batteries. And then I've got one just down here. We've also got multi-chargers. So this is our AL301-4. You can put four batteries in it overnight and it will charge them one after the other. Um, so you can come back to fully charged batteries in the morning. Lots of charging options indeed. Very interesting. Thank you, first of all, Paul. My question to you, how do you prefer to charge? Are you a quick sandwich over lunch break charge kind of person or would you rather let it sit all night long? Let us know in the uh, comments how you work on site and off site. That would be very interesting.
Thank you very much. When I'm thinking about charging, one final thing comes to mind, and that is when we've got teams that have got multiple batteries on the go at the same time. Tell us about fleet management and how the system can help us coordinate that. Well, of course, when you've got lots of batteries and lots of tools, fleet management can really help, and, and managing all those tools easily is, uh, is paramount. Yes. So we've actually got a system called Still Connected for our tools, but in this context, for our batteries. Mm -hmm. So it's built in, you can see the little C there, yep. this AP300S and also it's in our AP500S batteries. Right. So this fleet management system allows you to see the charge status or the the, uh, the level of charge the last time that was connected to the still connected app. On an app or something, right? On an app and the desktop as well. So you can actually see on the Pro Portal on a desktop the charge level, so you can check, have you got 100% charge for your next day's work? If you're sitting there in the evening and you think, oh, did I charge them or, or did I not charge them? But not only that, it shows a lot of other interesting data. So it can show the health of the battery, it can show the amount of charge cycles that battery's been through, the total energy it's consumed wow. as well. But perhaps the, the, the really handy feature on there is uh, a little LED light where you can send a little notification to the battery from your app so if you've got 40 batteries on the shelf in the workshop and you don't know one, which one to pick up, you can light up the little LED oh. and go and pick that one off the shelf to give to that uh, the operator that you'd plan to, to give the battery to. So. I see. So better than rummaging around and looking at uh, serial numbers like we used to, maybe. Exactly that. A bit of a time-saving thing. OK, I've got a couple more questions for you before you go, if that's OK. I'm going to put the charger back. And I would be very interested to know about ergonomics when we're working outdoors. What kind of options have we got there? Well, absolutely. If, if you want to have a lot of power from a battery and longevity, then it does come with a little bit of a weight. So right. we have a few options to take that weight out of the tool and put it on either on the hip or the backpack. So let's okay. like, take a little look at a couple of the solutions okay. we've got here. I'll put on this uh, hip belt with a shoulder harness and you and put I'm on the backpack. I'm going backpack, yeah. There we go. We've got clips as well. Top clip. And where's my bottom clip? Here we go. Okay, I'm in. There you go. So you've Bring got in. your connecting cord there as well. So what we've got is a backpack here that you can fit the battery down the bottom to deliver power to the tool via a connecting cord. You've also got another space for a battery just above it here. So if you just turn around, what we've got is a connecting cord that can deliver power directly into the tool for tools with a slot. Mm -hmm. Or if you've got a tool which would normally take a battery, you can plug that straight in there, put that in the tool. Got it. So now the weight is on your back. It's a lot lighter on the... And it is. I don't know if I'm wearing it at all. Genuinely, you know, the, the, the padding here is nice. And I can see what you mean. The, the weight is totally distributed across my back. And then I wouldn't have that in the tool, right? Exactly. So it just makes the oper operator's life a lot easier yeah. having a lighter tool in their hands because they're working all day with battery tools. <laughs> and um, it's just easier to, to take the weight and put it on your back. So your solution, it puts it on your back. Mm. And the solution that I've got on here is a hip belt where I can put the battery on my hip again with a connecting cord or I could pop that into our AP adapter there. So two ways of taking the weight out of a tool and putting it in different places where it's nice and comfortable to wear all day long. Very important ergonomic working, very, very important indeed. I've got one final question before you go. We've heard about all these fantastic devices today. What about after sale support once we've got them? Well, we still have a huge dealer network all across the world. So whether you want spares or some bars and chains for your machines, or whether you want expert advice on which machines to, to move to or what batteries you need with them, they can offer expert advice. So we've got a, a huge network uh, globally to help everybody out. Always someone there to help. That's brilliant. Thank you. Speaking of help for your help today, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing this again. Hopefully. Thank you very much for having me. Beautiful. Thank you, Paul. And thank you also for stopping by. We, we hope that you learned something. We hope that you enjoyed the time with us as well. Um, maybe you'd like to ask us some questions, pop them in the uh, comments. That'd be fascinating. Paul and his team will do their very best to answer them. And of course, click that magic subscribe button and then you'll be notified about any other future Steel videos. Until then, from all of us here in the workshop, thanks for stopping by. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.